Hi everyone. Today I'm taking a look at a classic and generally well respected ultra wide angle lens for APS-C digital cameras. We have the Canon 10 to 22 mm f3.5 to 4.5 USM. It costs about 400 pounds or 600 US dollars new and it's about 10 years old now. It's a camera lens with a special place in my heart. It's the first ultra wide angle lens I ever bought back when I was living in South Korea and I was learning about photography, which was a very exciting part of my life. It's even the first camera lens I ever reviewed on this YouTube channel back in the days before my tests were standardized. Now most APS-C kits lenses start at a wide angle of 18mm, the Canon 18-55 or 18-135. Well, this lens goes as wide as 10mm, as you can see that's a far wider angle. This is helpful for photography indoors or in tight spaces. It's also useful for pushing back your subject and giving you an extremely wide background even if you're shooting quite close up. The corners of your images will look dramatically stretched, lending a new perspective to otherwise unexciting scenes. And video footage at 10mm looks especially cool. It's the equivalent of 16mm on a full frame camera. I love that focal length. While the zoom range starts at 10mm, it can zoom in to 22mm. That's actually a good zoom range for an APS-C ultra wide angle lens. It has a maximum aperture of f3.5 to 4.5, so it does darken a little as you zoom in, but still, that's about average for this kind of lens. It's possible to get some out of focus backgrounds too, if you get real close. However, bear in mind that the lens does not have image stabilization. As I mentioned, this lens has a special place in my heart, but I'm here to review it as objectively as possible for you. Let's start with the build quality. The lens is based around a metal mount, which is nice and solid, but not weather sealed. On the rear mount of the lens you can see a plastic cap, which prevents you from mounting it onto a full frame camera, so you won't be able to use this on any of Canon's full frame cameras or film cameras. Back in the old days of Canon's APS-H censored cameras, some people would hack the plastic end bit off in order to mount it on their camera, giving you a full image circle from about 12mm. So there you go, that's a slightly obscure tip for people who are using APS-H cameras. The rest is made of good quality plastics, which makes it feel solid enough, but not too big or heavy. It'll balance well on pretty much any camera. The lens's zoom ring is not stamped, but it is very smooth to turn indeed, and quite nice and precise. It's especially easy to use during video work, as it's quite light to turn. The front of the lens doesn't extend as you zoom in and out, but the inner barrel of the lens does. That means you can put a filter on the front of the lens and have a very slight weather sealing advantage on the front. The lens's focus ring is very smooth and precise and you can turn it at any time, whether this lens is in manual focus or not. The lens uses Canon's USM autofocus motor, which is lightning fast, silent and accurate. Some people might be wondering if the lens makes any noise while it's auto-fixing during video work. Let's take a look. Well, obviously it's not dreadfully fast while auto-fixing in live view mode, and a little clicking noise is audible, but it's not as bad as Sigma's lenses. All in all, the lens is built very nicely indeed. It doesn't come with a lens hood though, you'll have to buy one separately if you want it although Canon's official one is very nice, with flocking on the inside. The whole lens is quite a substantial and well-made piece of kit, without being too big or heavy. Ok then, let's take a look at the lens's image quality. I'll be testing it on a 20 megapixel Canon 70D with peripheral illumination and chromatic aberration correction turned on. Still, a 20 megapixel camera is quite a challenge for a 10 year old lens. Let's see what it can do. At 10mm and f3.5, the lens is quite sharp in the middle of its images, although not quite perfect. Colours are neutral, contrast is a bit so-so. Let's look in the corners. 
This older lens is struggling a little bit on a Canon 70D and the corners are a tiny bit soft, although not dreadful. Even with chromatic aberration correction turned on, we are seeing a little purple colour fringing. Let's top down to f5.6. Image quality is clearly a bit sharper in those corners. And stop down to f8 for very sharp corners indeed. Take a look back in the middle and picture quality is perfect. So even after all these years, the lens is still reasonably sharp, although newer lenses can do a bit better. Let's zoom in then to 22mm. At f4.5, the lens is only averagely sharp in the middle of the image and contrast is not great. Let's look in the corners. They're looking rather soft, if truth be told. If you stop down to f8 though, we do get decent enough sharpness in those corners. Back in the middle of the image, the picture quality is very sharp, and that's about as sharp as the lens gets. So, overall, the lens is showing its age a little bit these days when used at its widest apertures. Newer lenses that I've tested are a bit sharper. But actually, the Canon 10 22 is still very capable of getting very sharp pictures indeed when stopped down, even on a 20 megapixel camera. It's just about sharp enough. Let's take a look now at distortion and vignetting. They're a strong point of this particular lens. At 10mm we see only moderate barrel distortion, which doesn't tend to be noticeable in normal pictures. At f3.5 we get some considerable vignetting, but it falls in quite a gentle way, so you don't tend to notice it in normal shooting, and also you can just use peripheral illumination like everyone else to get rid of it. Or stop down to f8 to get rid of it, but those dark corners never really go away at 10mm. If you zoom in to 22mm, then the distortion flattens out. Again, at f4.5, we see darkness in the corners. Stop down to f8, and the picture brightens up. So, it's a good performance for distortion, and average for vignetting. This Canon lens can focus as closely as 24cm, which is reasonably close for some creative photography. At f4.5, the close-up image quality seems to be a little soft, but stop down to f8 and it gets decently sharp. Let's look now at the lens's work against bright lights. Nothing special here, unfortunately. We see a drop in contrast and some rather noticeable flaring. I've seen worse and I've seen better. Finally, bokeh. This lens is capable of getting somewhat out of focus backgrounds if your subject is close enough. Some wide-angle lenses struggle with their bokeh, but the Canon lens does quite a good job. Out-of-focus backgrounds are generally fairly smooth. You never get any major distractions. At the end of the day, the Canon 10-22mm is a bit overpriced for a 10-year-old lens, but it's still quite a capable instrument. It's well-built, and its optics are still just about sharp enough. It shows little distortion, vignetting and flaring are average, and it has good quality bokeh. It's just a nice all-rounder. Although do bear in mind, if you need an ultra-wide angle lens for more specific purposes, such as low-light photography or video work, there are other options out there. Check out my ultra-wide angle lens comparison video, which is coming in a few days, where I look at 8 different ultra-wide angle lenses, or check out the detailed reviews on my YouTube channel. All my tests are standardised now, so you can draw all the comparisons you need yourself. Have fun making your mind up.